Last week, Vermont had a special visitor in the state to talk about science. Actor Alan Alda spoke with our own science reporter, Kat Villianzoni, who joins us this morning. And Kat, what did he tell you? Well, Julie, Alan Alda is perhaps best known for his roles in MASH and the West Wing, but he told me his lifelong passion is actually science. How do scientists run into trouble with conveying their ideas? Like the most basic problem is not connecting to the people they're talking to or writing for and connecting mostly to what's in one's own head. And that's a problem because they're not in your head. And the solution to the problem is to get in their head, to see if you can figure out what they're thinking while they're hearing you because what matters is not what you have to say nearly so much as what they're getting. Because if you say it and they don't get it, then it wasn't, in the way it wasn't said, it never got out of your head. And how do you connect an idea that might be pretty complicated without losing the integrity of what your study was? Really important, we, we, we try to make it clear that we want clarity but we want accuracy. We, we don't want them to dumb it down. It's really, it, it, that, that's to be avoided at all costs. Because if you dumb it down and the audience gets it, they haven't really gotten what you want to communicate. So there's no point in it. And worse than having no point, it actually can be harmful. If, if they think that some new way of eating is preferable because they misunderstood you or if they think that some new way of missing sleep is okay. You know, it can, it can be harmful. It's got to be clear, but it's got to be accurate. But clarity, above all, I don't think science was ever hurt by too much clarity. Mm. So how do you achieve that clarity when maybe the person you're talking to does not have that science background? Well, that's the whole point. If, if you're talking to somebody or to an audience that you know is probably not trained in science, you have to bring them up to speed in some way so that they understand what you're talking about. But one of the mistakes that we often make is that we say too much. Sometimes we don't start back early enough and sometimes we go on too long. And you can cram somebody's head so full of stuff that they can't really sort out what you just told them. So you gotta go step by step appropriate to the people you're talking to, which is why it's so important to understand what's going on in their heads. Who are they? Where are they in their understanding when they come in? and what can you take them to next? And you said your own curiosity about science has inspired you yeah. in your career. Talk about how that came about and then where often people get surprised by the fact that you're so interested in science. If people, I guess people are surprised that I'm interested in science because you don't expect an actor or a writer to have that interest. That's one of the problems that we have in the culture. Everybody should be expected to be interested in science. It's like hearing good music or reading a good book. Why do we do that? We do it because it's fun. It's fun in a deep way. Well, so is science, if we can only have it communicated to us so we have a chance to get it. What do you love about science? To me, science is a great detective story. It's, it's an adventure. And I, just by reading about science and talking to scientists, I'm in on their adventure, and it's thrilling to me. I don't, there isn't anything as thrilling as that. The unexpected is constantly happening. I think people go to a sports stadium to experience the unexpected, that fellow humans are going through some tremendous effort to achieve something, and they're just trying to get across the goal line. In science, there's that same effort to achieve something against tremendous odds. And when they come up with their goal, crossing their goal line, all our lives are different. So how can you not be interested in that? Definitely a great conversation with him. Such an interesting man to talk to. And you can hear our full conversation with Alda on this week's You Can Quote Me, which is actually going to be on our website a little bit later.
All right, thank you, Kat. I'm going to date myself a little, but boy, I just, I'll never forget him on MASH, the last episode of MASH, sitting with my three brothers and my mom and dad in our living room in St. Jay, watching that show as a family. It doesn't happen very often, and I think for a lot of us, seeing him reminds us of that memory. We heard from so many people on our Facebook page when we posted earlier this week that he was in Vermont, so many people saying, like you, remembering they were watching it with their yeah. family mm -hmm. and yeah. remembering him as an actor and saying that they really appreciated his character. It's, it was a different time because those were shows that had millions of viewers mm -hmm. in the audience and like everybody watched it.